have said um, in a very short-term memory. So it's good for an interviewer just to prompt me slightly in case I just just go off, uh, you, you know, and, we, and the audience then lose Fred. So this is a good thing. Uh, the man, the man in particular, uh, was um, stalking me. Definitely, um, I don't think he still read in to the project that he was involved with because uh, he reminds me of there's a film called Smoking Aces there's a character in there who is played by the actor Nesta Carbonell called um, Gerald Digo and he looks the absolute uh, spitting image of this man that is, you just couldn't get it any closer now what was happening was uh, this guy uh, came into a local pub one evening a pub, a bar, an ale house uh, in my local town and um, I'd been dreaming about him Kerry for a number of weeks as if to, so the universe was saying it's him, it's him, it's him and uh, sure enough he turned up in a pub I thought oh my god but your brain you see when somebody is being targeted, Kerry, and they're not trained to cope with the mindset, the mindset that's coming at you is very much like in the Jason Bourne films, uh, where they're going after him. Uh, there's that bit in one of the Bourne movies where the journalist is on Victoria Station, uh, and you've got these crazy swines in the CIA going after the journalist without jurisdiction, going after Jason Bourne, who's a victim of mind control, and it's, the, it's this psychotic mindset that just is comfortable in its own empire, cannot be challenged, it enjoys uh, the diplomacy, diplomatic immunity of secrecy, wanders into a pub and comments on what they were doing to me, says to me, uh, as I wander past him, to his colleague, I see he's off to the toilet again, as I walk past him. And then she says to him, why isn't Anthony speaking to us? 15 years, Kerry, I've done, 15 years I've touched that story and it's not changed, it never will change because it bloody well happened. And they stopped me in that pub. Uh, and what is interesting is they played a smarter opponent. They definitely played a smarter opponent. And so that's why it's a covert witness. That's why I'm in a co I've been in a covert war with people who I don't understand, who do not have jurisdiction, who do not protect the public. And what the hell are they bloody doing? So that, that was the situation that occurred with him. Uh, and my driving engine has been to speak out against the utter depravity that they expose me to with this very advanced technology and not understanding uh, the baffling UFO stuff that came in over the house as well and the unmarked helicopter. I mean, for God's sake, they sent an unmarked helicopter after me, Kerry, in the 1990s that filmed me. But the thing is, he was filming me side on. So he, he, to cut a long story short, I thought, I thought his flight pattern was side on. I filmed it. Side on, side on. He hovered across a road junction. It was like something out of a Jason Bourne film. He's hovering across a road junction at the height of a lamppost, side on. Well, he has to be side on because he's taking measurements and signature intelligence analysis and we, we sent the helicopter for analysis the bloody things bristling with sensors and camera gear uh, a Lynx pilot commented he'd never seen anything like it because it was an unusual helicopter bristling with gear uh, because they knew that the situation was occurring with me that involved the UFOs and the people behind them and they were trying to brute force hack it and trying to listen in and monitor it is what they were doing uh. I do believe so at this moment, what I'm wondering is, uh, do you think that, um, that the contact experiences you are having, do you know which beings they, they are? Were yes. they all the same group or were they different? And what were they communicating to you, if anything? Okay. All right. Okay. Um... Some of this, uh, because of uh, what goes on uh, behind the scenes, um, some of this must remain deeply personal to me uh, and for my own safety, firstly and foremostly. So, um, you, of course, you have got to be careful, Kerry. There's a guy in NASA at the moment who you won't know about, even you probably won't know of him, who uh, who hasn't, who's given, given an interview to Whitley Stryber. I know who he is, uh, but he hasn't gone public with his experiences because he is a major academic and he'll get shot to pieces because of it. But that's not the point. The point is, you do have a goon squad out there. Who um, who's doing all this and it's very wrong but anyway another story um, basically uh, there are several ET groups that are out there the one that I am mainly dealing with is uh, blonde blue eyed what you would refer to as a, the Nord or Nordic uh, they are the ones who I am currently uh, mainly dealing with had it not been for them I would probably have thrown myself in the river and committed suicide. They saved my life. Uh, but they saved my life, Kerry, for what reason? We're among friends here. This is Project Camelot. We go in deep. So for what reason, because they don't do anything without reason, uh, were they? what's their investment? That's the question. That's the question you have got to ask is what is their investment? But I assure you that they are you know, not from around here. 
Okay, but I'm trying to. I guess what I'm trying to do is figure out why. Uh, you know what they're what they're doing, what they're saying to you. In other words, oh. saying they have an investment that's uh, speculative. Are you having verbal contact, or is yeah. it? No, absolutely. No, no, no. No, we're we're having uh, we're having uh, we're having kindergarten drip 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 contact with them. They're going at a pace that I can understand. Uh, they've said to me that I will not be able to understand their science. In fact, currently their science is possibly uh, we would only grasp it possibly about 140 years from now. It'll take us to maybe grasp their science. But but for now, uh, currently it's all very kindergarten. It's all very drip drip drip. It's all at a level that I can handle. They've told me that I will not be able to comprehend comprehend their science, but I will be able to understand their spirituality and their spiritual understanding of things um, and the information that has come from them. The, the thing is, Kerry, is that I can't tell you why they're not telling me, because they're not telling me why. Do you get me drift? So I'm in a scenario where they're being a bit cagey as to why they're turning up, why they're doing what they're doing. There's been some comical moments with them. I kid you not, it's been hilarious, darkly comical with them. Uh, but but they're not telling me specifically why yet they're turning up and doing what they're doing, but they are. It possibly relates to power. It possibly relates to the fact that there has been a signature signal left in me by a higher intelligence than them because the universe is a super supernatural to them as it is to us and it appears to be that that is a possible case of why they're turning up because they're monitoring they uh, they watch uh, and they monitor very closely what goes on are you aware of having any implants I am implanted yes okay. I do I do have an implant yes all right fair enough and uh, can you describe? Have you been, for example, have you dealt with greys? You know what a grey. Never is. seen. I have never seen a grey. This is okay. what's baffling, Kerry. In, uh, in all my career, which spans a lifetime of doing this, I've seen things that would uh, put, probably you have as well that would put your hair on end. But I've never seen a grey. Uh, I've seen about, not human. Uh, no, I'm just going down a laundry list here. What about praying mantis? Have you ever seen no. one of those? What about reptilians? Yes. Okay. Yes. Can you describe those. Uh, it, uh, isn't it amazing how we mention reptilians? The audio always goes. Sorry. Uh, in other words, if what I'd like to get is sort of, I, I'm sure the viewer as well would like to know, if you've seen reptilians, have you seen only one? What do they look like? Or have you seen several different ones? And what do they look like? Uh, that's uh, I've seen two of different uh, different skin color. Uh, and uh, what do they look like? Um, Shocking, frankly, Kerry. There's only one word. You, you just look and think, "Good God, good God." That's um, that's Draco. Um, that is a Draco reptilian. Uh, Joseph McMonigle, uh, the U.S. Army's most decorated remote viewer, he had an incident with one in his kitchen. Uh, as I understand in his autobiography, he's actually had a, a couple of the U.S. remote viewers have had yeah, several. I, I, look, I've met some reptil. I've seen reptilians, uh, so I, I have no issue with this. What I want to know is. For your purpose, you know, for the purposes here of interviewing you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. saying that they were shocking is uh, your reaction to them. It doesn't tell me what they look like. So are you saying they looked uh, like, um, you know, can you describe them? Did, did they look uh, humanoid? Did they stand yeah, yeah, they, they, they were they were humanoid, but from the land that time forgot, as they refer themselves to, there's a whole probably a whole piece of our history uh, that's missing because at some level, as wacky as it may seem, the dinosaurs walked and talked, but that's missing from our evolutionary history and agenda. It's just missing, isn't it, Kerry? So what what you've got is a scenario where these uh, that that what fascinated me about them was their eyes, their eyes, their energy level from their eyes was, was quite unbelievable uh, but there is an element to this intelligence where if it was a, a biological collective uh, of consciousness it's very corrupt and very dark and very depraved uh, at some level it is um, that's all I can describe it as really you want to describe any of the incidents in which you met a reptilian and what happened uh, the incidents in which I met Sir Etzeli and it only happened for about two seconds and it was looking at me and that's all I can say. Anything else would, would be erroneous to describe that. It, to expand it in any way would be wrong. Uh, there are the presence of something uh, very ancient, uh, very ancient around that era is still around humanity today, controlling things and it must be treated with respect. But uh, I, I can't add to that, Kerry, because that would be wrong to do okay, so. Okay, for example, I have seen a winged 
uh, shikar it is what they're called. I, I've seen a, a reptilian with wings. Mm. Have you, did the ones that you saw have wings, or were they just no, no, they no, they didn't, they didn't have wings. No, they were another, they were possibly in another space time dimension, uh, probably just outside the periphery of the human subconscious collective dreamscape, uh, possibly in the fourth dimension, not local to time as we would know it. Uh, basically, yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Then moving on from reptilians, uh, you say you've seen the tall blondes. It sounds yeah. like. Yeah, yeah, variants as well. Uh, and um, what what is fascinating is uh, the one I liaise with. He's about thirty years of age, I would suggest. The guy in question that I have often seen, that I am having comical capers with currently, uh, he is about thirty years of age. Very intelligent. Um, and just refreshing, really. You just at first the impact of what they look like, Kerry, uh, is just unbelievable. What they he, he, they did something wild with me a few weeks back, and it was wild because what you've got is you've got the Stephenville incident, you've got the Belgium UFO triangle incident. Uh, they're triangles. They're uh, highly capable craft. Highly capable. Uh, they're capable of air, sea, and space. Uh, they're artificially intelligent. They have a mind of their own to their craft. So when you see some of their triangles knocking about, it's Nord. It, it's from Andromeda. It, they're from Andromeda. A lot of people say that they're from here, they're from there, but they've told me that they're from Andromeda. Um, okay, from the so Andromeda you had an encounter with uh, beings from that craft, are you saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, and, but what, what is more fascinating? Beings from that Andromedan craft, oh, were they? Tall blonde, or were they? In yeah, no, no, that's all. That's all. That's all blonde. There's, there's variants of them, but they uh, mainly, uh, mainly they are Nordic from Andromeda. The blonde beings, as they refer themselves to, they're they're they're, they're blonde. Uh, their women are very. They're a very tribal collective of people. They have a tribal kind of element. They're very proud of who they are. Uh, that's what struck me about them. Uh, very proud of who they are. Uh, they're very, uh, their craft are very, as I say, very advanced. But what happens is, is that uh, the craft has a mind of its own, Kerry. It has an awareness yeah. and a mind of its own. Yes, and the, ex yeah. the experience of, of merging with that mind is absolutely incredible. So you see we've gone from this uh, torture with mind control to the far reaches of the paranormal and dealing with these people from other worlds. Uh, so I've lost everything and gained, gained a lot. In terms of insights um, right. and knowledge, but but the, uh, the the insight of a machine intelligence speaking to you, uh, which was the craft, uh, was absolutely staggering. Um, and so I know when they're around, they will let me know when they're about. They're coming over the house, uh, and they do it very kindergarten, very tippy toey, uh, because they need to, because it it scares me. I, I cannot honestly say that I'm greeting them with open arms as the space <laughs> brothers. Because I'm wondering, okay. I'm actually, you know, because I'm wondering. What the hell's going on? And they're not—they're not quite telling me. Um, but they're intelligent. They're smart. Very right. smart. Okay. So uh, yeah. when did you start? Um, let's say we—we uh, we kind of got up to the year 2000 or beyond. I, I believe in your in sort of your chron chronology. But when did you start to interact? I guess you might say interact with the uh, machine intelligences and. Beings. The, the machine intelligence issue was only about two weeks ago uh, be, because they are obviously, uh, I don't quite know what they're doing, but they're analyzing, they're monitoring uh, a situation to do with what your uh, US government would call in the 1950s non human entities or NHE uh, under the umbrella of a shadowy organization called the Collins Elite. Have you heard of them at all? You, I don't know what you've heard of them. There was a Majestic 12, Collins Elite, um, you know, that kind kind of thing. Uh, they were looking, Collins Elite were looking at um, kind of like what's going on, there's something deeper, more dark, demonic going on uh, within the UFO situation. So well, what uh, they're... Actually, let's just stop you right there. So uh, you're saying that uh, there's something called the Collins Elite, and you're starting to be, at least re reference, uh, a, a sort of a satanic side. And actually, the satanic side is very important. What's going on in Britain, in particular, and I'm I'm wondering if you're, you know, if you can go into that direction a little bit more. Uh, no, I, I can't. I have other people to think of on my own personal safety, Kerry. Uh, at the moment, <laughs> okay, I, uh, I don't want to talk about it, but you know about it. 
Uh, yeah, I, I'm fully aware of it. Um, uh, just at this moment in time, Kerry, because there are other family members that I, I need to look after closely uh, that are vulnerable, uh, and these because these people, Kerry, are deranged. They are uh, they are lethal. They are deranged. They're not very pleasant. Uh, and I get the royal treatment, Kerry. Uh, you know, I don't just get any old uh, any old dark man coming to me. I get the man um, who you may who Project Commonwealth may know of. Uh, a lot of them. A lot of people talk about him. Uh, and the thing is, is that these hierarchies have been around us for a very long time uh, and, it, and it is that kind of uh, theme that targeted me. All through my mind control there was a very dark theme of that running through it Kerry so I'm aware of it uh, it's just that I'm at a stage where I have other people um, to think of so therefore I'm just careful about what I say but it, in the UK it is real. In the UK children are being abused uh, by them. It's very nasty. Yes, okay that's very true. Uh, so at this moment, uh, because you know, people often talk about the UFO sort of subject, but they they neglect to mention the satanic side of it. Yes, and, they do. Uh, very important if you're aware of both sides uh, that that people start to put those two together. So I, I'm not asking you to necessarily talk about that in in in, in any depth, but uh, acknowledging that you're aware of it is enough. Yeah, th th there's a very there's a very ancient force, Kerry, that controls this planet. It has been here. Uh, the the aliens refer to it as the Overlord Consciousness. Uh, now, what is interesting about this, uh, Kerry, is that I had a face-to-face, -face, head-on meeting with it. I met it across the dreamscape. It looked at me. I looked at it. Uh, it's to do with esoteric. It's to do with with the very deep esoteric goings on. Uh, because I'm not quite what I appear. It would appear. There you go. But that's another story. But basically, um, this thing uh, looked at me and I looked at it. This is what's interesting about it, Kerry, is that um, it uh, needs to evolve. So what you've got is this controlling intelligence that has caused two world wars on this planet. Yes. Um, death of human beings en masse. Uh, two world wars. Um, uh, all kinds of goings on. But it needs to evolve. It's, it's smart enough to know this. And uh, that's what I saw when I was exposed to it. But the thing is, when you're exposed to that that uh, exposure of non-human entities across a dreamscape, Kerry, you're traumatized. It traumatizes you, and it leaves you your aura, your energy, sending out all kinds of weird shit. Basically, it's hideous, absolutely okay. hideous. So. Okay. Um, that's what I'm talking about. That's you know uh, about it. So I hope that just clarifies. So uh, and, and there's a history of this of, of kind of like remote viewers, uh, members of the government being exposed to this non-human entity. Well, okay. Okay. Let me let me slow you down a little bit here. So have you ever had uh, anyone regress you? Uh, no. Okay. And have you ever consulted any uh, psychics or other people that are having Sort of, or that you might consider to be psychic. On, on numerous occasions, yes. Okay, and were they able to help you at all? Uh, yes, uh, two people have been uh, able to help me, uh, very much so. Uh, one guy who I didn't think would be able to help me in a million years, who was the head of the spiritual church, uh, he, was a, he was a spiritual teacher in Southport in Merseyside in the UK, who was a tremendous um, tremendous help to me. What it is, Kerry, is when you're exposed at that level, to, to what's going on, uh, you need to make sure that your state of consciousness uh, becomes very disciplined in aligning with the greater power, in aligning with the cosmic sure. consciousness. Yes, uh, because if you don't, you will be you will be toast, basically. Yes. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Great. So at this moment, uh, can you talk about where you are now with everything? Uh, where I am now at the moment is, uh, I, I don't know, I can hear my voice just feeding back to you, Kerry. I don't know, can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine. You can hear me fine. I can just hear myself coming back to me. That's all right. Um, yeah, well, where I am at the moment is the fact that um, I'm being closely watched by the people in the UFOs. Uh, I'm having a liaison with three groups. Um, there is a situation of ethical concern among them over what one particular group uh, exposed me to, uh, and that's where we are at at the moment. Uh, the liaison with the blonde people is continuing and will continue. Uh, it will go on for whatever reason that is going on for. I haven't got quite the answer as to why that's going on, but they are certainly going to appear uh, over my home again, I think, uh, and we're going to film 
them yet again. We will film the UFO again that, that, that they're in. It will come over the house at some point in the proceedings. I'm expecting it, basically, which is quite comical because the world's tearing itself apart. And I've got this little liaison going on with people from not from around here, you know? Yes, of course. Now, uh, when uh, you, you, you say there was some kind of incident that this uh, group, these groups are aware of, uh, with regard to you, uh, that's a very vague statement. It is. Okay, I'm going to come on to it. Yeah, no, I'm, go I'm going to come on to it. Okay. it was in my, uh, yeah, I'm going to come on to it, of course. We can't leave your listeners coming out with remarks like that without clarification. <laughs> of course not, no. I'm going to move on to that. Yeah. What it is, Kerry, is that if you have a uh, liaison with uh, dimensional people in another dimension, we'll call them, uh, you are crossing uh, a spiritual plane you are crossing a, an astral plane, let us say, and you are crossing like an ocean of time and space. And your liaison with them is kind of like uh, forward in time from where you currently are, because they're further forward in time. Time is non-local. It's not running as normal Earth time. They're further down a timeline. So what you've got is a scenario is that you have this liaison with them, and then you're put back into current time, and you are carrying with you a signature where everybody sees you within what's known as a space-time continuum. Uh, and that's well, okay, where it's hold on one moment here, Tony. Uh, I'm getting a, a message here uh, that we're having an echo from you that's yeah. started. Um, now, it's funny because I can't hear it, but I am being told that there is an echo. There from is. You. Yeah, there is. There's a clear echo, yeah, coming back. Yeah, I can hear it. I'm echoing to you, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, could you perhaps turn your audio a bit lower at your end, and uh, we will turn it. I'll turn it up at my end, just a bit, not a lot. Uh, sometimes that helps an echo if you're getting feedback over there. Um, let me know if that. And this has just started, from what I understand, correct? Yeah, yeah it will. It's uh, no doubt it will do. Uh, just try that. Is that that any good? That's probably stopped it now at my end. Can you hear okay. me? I can hear you fine. Okay, yeah, it's it is it's a feedback loop of some description. Uh, I can still hear it, I'm afraid, but I hope it doesn't affect the uh, I hope it doesn't affect the broadcast. Okay, yeah, I, I'm a bit uh, concerned about that. I, I don't know. Um, I guess my producer is in the background here. I'm going to ask uh, that he would. He says it's a bit clearer. Okay, so you were uh, you were trying to answer uh, the question, which had to do with you had mentioned there were two, uh, from what I understand, two groups that you're dealing with in um, in England. Uh, I don't know if these are UFO groups or what, but uh, can you explain? You said there was some kind of uh, dissension between the two groups over. Over treatment of you, I, I, you it could be. It could, yeah, it could be. Kind of, uh, it's treatment of me and possibly treatment of other human beings as well, because of what they're being exposed to. Because we, we're, we're not just being exposed to uh, the dreamscape, the astral plane. We're being exposed to a space-time continuum environment. Some of us, uh, whereby time is is kind of like not local, and we're being seen by other people and other forces that are not local to our time, and this can cause some real problems. And uh, you're left. The contactee experiencer is left with the experience with the pieces is left with the yeah is left with a life that is shattered by the experience. It's not all uh, okay. peace, love, yeah. and light with them. Yeah, and okay. you're shattered by it. Okay, but what has that got to do with the the groups you're dealing with? Uh, well, what that's got to do with the groups is the fact that these these groups appear to be analyzing and monitoring uh, a situation that has occurred with me that is beyond my comprehension and it's like uh, they are holding uh, I'm holding a set of cards they see the set of cards Kerry and they know the cards I'm holding but they're not telling me so in, in answer to your question I don't know the answer to that question I'm trying to find that out just as much as you are to say that I know is wrong and to exaggerate it in any way would be incorrect and I've got to be careful careful of that. You can't exaggerate this. It's what it is. This is what I'm seeing. I've got journals from 2001 to the current date of all kinds of events and happenings being awoken at all hours because some human beings are um, 
I've jumped the evolutionary ladder, perhaps a slightly more evolved than normal should be. Uh, we're, we're in the wrong place at the wrong time, and it's caused all kinds of problems. What I can't get over, Kerry, is the creepiness of it all, the shadiness of it all, the reluctance of them to tell me any more information about, about what is going on, and that really troubles me a great deal. And that will include people who are listening to this show who, who probably have, uh, there will be people, an agency out there that will have a file a mile wide on me, and I will, and they will know why, because they, they targeted me first. They knew why before I did. Okay, it's, it's okay. Yep. Let me say this, that uh, it, we know that, uh, that contactees are actually monitored in a very big way, and they yep. continue to be, uh, yes. by the powers that be, as we call them, uh, simply because it's their only window in to yes. what the ETs are doing with other humans besides the ones that they're dealing with in a direct way. So, of course they're interested and they are, um, sometimes they're very aggressive about it, sometimes they want to stop it, they're trying to stop and interfere with your contact, and, and sometimes they're actually, that's part of why they try to qu make you question your sanity and, and so on, and by doing crazy stuff to you and getting you mentally exhausted in the process. Your, your, government, your government, Kerry, is so involved in this in ways that it doesn't even comprehend yet. Uh, and, and that is interesting because what happened is a few weeks ago, you will notice on, uh, on the icon that you put up for your viewers, in the background, the picture of a triangle. Did you see it from one of my drawings? It's an illustration done by Lloyd Canning. It's a Nordic triangle. And last year, in the year 2014, that in, while I slept, they appeared over my house as clear as day at the height of the Ukraine crisis. And they were more or less speaking to someone as if the volume was turned off. The party they were speaking to, Kerry, I have no idea who they were, but they were speaking to a third party. They were speaking to a human party, a third party, to which I am a repeater for. So, in a nutshell, I'm involved in an operation where I am a go-between. I am part of a party of people who are being communicating with. And uh, it was at that moment that the Ukraine crisis stepped down and de-escalated and de-escalated because the governments of Russia, Britain and America are aware of these people and are aware that they are an advanced culture and are aware that they were being warned. The question was Kerry is who is he, the Nordic blonde guy, speaking to across the dimension of time and space he was speaking to someone, but it wasn't me, it was via me. So this is the kind of the crazy stuff that I'm subjected to, it's some type of dark operation of communication. Okay, in, in what, nutshell, what do you yeah. mean by it wasn't you, it was via you? It was via me, yeah. Um, it's kind of similar to being in a repeater network, Kerry, that isn't governed by time. Um, I, I can't understand what the link is, but basically it's a link through me to someone else who is obviously monitoring and communicating with them, either in this current time or in a future time, because the activities of the blondes are not dictated by uh, not are not dictated by time in the sense that we would know. Um, and there is a school of thinking that say that Nordics from Andromeda come for our future, uh, and I think that there is something in that that they possibly do come from our future. The activities that we're seeing at the moment with the UFOs are indeed possibly not from this current time, but from a future time, and are interacting in the now uh, to navigate the human race, uh, certainly, as I say again, your government is so involved in ways that it could possibly understand with it, and th uh, that is the key to understanding who the third party is that they're speaking to. They're speaking to a human group, they're speaking to a covert okay. subdescription. Okay.